Hello, and welcome to the Gamer's Closet. I'm your host, Douglas Weed, and today we're going to be talking about where in the world is Carmen Sandiego? This game was manufactured in 1992 by University Games. It seats anywhere from two to six players, runs for about an hour of game time, and is rated for ages 10 and up. But let's dig into it a little further, shall we? It is now eight minutes before nine o'clock. We've just seen in Denise Richardson's report, millions of young PBS viewers are learning about geography while trying to find out where in the world is Carmen San Diego. As it happens, the search for Carmen will be endless. But we have found her house band, Rockapella, and they're joining us now to sing Carmen's high energy theme song. Rockapella, Rockapella. Two, three, yeah. Well, she sneaks around the world, yet to Carolina. She's bathing in maker culture, rolling down from Belize. Taking you for a ride on a slow boat to China. Tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Steal their soul in South Korea, make it not a good cry. go from the Red Sea to Green Love, they who sing in the blues. Will they never rock and saw this? Steal her come from a jungle. San Diego. She go from Nashville to Norway, Bonaire to Zimbabwe, Chicago to Czechoslovakia and back. Well, she'll ransack Pakistan and run a scam in Scandinavia. Then she'll stick them up down under and go pick pocket worth. She put the missing misdemeanor when she stole the beans from Lima. Tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Oh, tell me where in the world. Oh, tell me where. She be Botswana to Thailand, Milan, via Amsterdam, Mali to Bali, Ohio, oh Monday through Friday at five. Well, she flies around the globe, then she'll flip them happy nation. She's a double dealing diva with a taste for thievery. Her acting I'm very slow to get up, moving by a San Diego. Oh, tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Oh, tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Oh, tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Oh, tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Oh, tell me where in the world is Where can she be? Yeah. Oh, where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Oh, tell me where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Watch your back. Where in the World is Carmen San Diego was released by University Games in 1992 and was reprinted for a second edition in 1993. The object of this game is to figure out which one of Carmen's bands stole a famous international landmark, then be the first to reach that thief's hideout. This board game is based on the award-winning video game series that was released in 1985 by Broderbund Incorporated. The game series was released originally on Commodore 64, Apple II, and PC, and has spawned several additional expansions, which includes Where in America's Past is Carmen Sandiego, and Where in Time is Carmen Sandiego. It has also spawned several television shows, including Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, which you can still watch on Netflix today. Where in the World is Carmen San Diego was released in the United States, Canada, as well as Brazil. This game does come with multiple pieces. It comes with six vile oval henchman pieces, six Acme Circle detective pieces, a set of instructions, eight clue cards, 226 question cards, six warrant and or escape cards, and a game board with a landmark spinner and solution key. To set up this game, put the clue cards, question cards, and warrant or escape cards into separate stacks. Divide the clue cards into categories without looking. Choose one card from each category and discard the rest. Place one clue card face down in front of each player. Each question card has two questions on it. Before starting play, the youngest player decides whether the group will play just the top questions, red or green, or just the bottom questions, black, 
during this game. There is no difference in difficulty between the top or bottom questions. To determine which landmark a vile henchman stole for the current game, the oldest player spins the landmark spinner. Place all players acne detectives at the scene of the crime, in a space next to the chosen landmark. Beginning with the youngest player, all players spin the landmark spinner, and then put their vile henchman playing pieces next to the landmarks they spin. The youngest player goes first. Play rotates to the youngest player's left, which is clockwise. Each player controls two characters, one acme detective and one vile henchman. Henchmen serve as informants. They keep the clues that lead to the identity of the master thief. Detectives track and catch henchmen to learn what these clues are. On your turn, you may either move your henchman or your detective, not both. The henchmen playing pieces are not suspects. The only vile henchmen who steal landmarks are listed on the solution key on the top of the board. On your turn, the player to your left picks up a card and reads the question that the youngest player chose for the current game, either top or bottom. If you answer correctly, move either your henchman or your detective five spaces in any manner you choose. If you do not know the answer, you may ask for a multiple choice option before guessing. The reader will then read you three choices. If you select the correct answer, move either your henchman or your detective two spaces in any manner that you choose. If you answer incorrectly, your turn is immediately over. You may not move. Correct answers are shown in bold. There is only one correct answer per question. More than one piece may share the same space. You may stop at any time during your move. You do not need to move your full number of spaces to which you are entitled. Since the world is round, you may move from the left edge of the board to the right edge and from the right edge to the left edge. As you exit the board, note the number of the row that you are on. It costs one space to move to the same row number on the other side of the board or to the row directly above or below the row in which you exited. You may not move off the top or bottom of the board. Blue cards pictured here on the top right are divided into four categories, gender, eye color, shoes, and favorite food. There are 16 different vile henchmen listed in the solution key. Each combination of clues corresponds to a different henchman. Whenever another player's detective stops on the same spot as your henchman, you must give all the clues you hold to that player. These clues belong to that player until a detective catches that player's henchman. Henchmen stay in the game after giving up their clues and hold any clues that their detectives recover later. Each player starts the game with one escape card, which allows a henchman to escape a detective. Any time that detective catches your henchman, you may play your escape card instead of giving up the clues you hold, then spin the landmark spinner and move your henchman to that landmark. You may only use your escape card once per game. After you use it, flip it over and place it aside. When you have seen all four clues, check the solution key to figure out which suspect is the mystery thief. To capture the mystery thief, you will need a warrant and information on the thief's hideout. To get the warrant, your acting detective must end your turn on a police station pictured here in the red dots. On the turn that you arrive at a police station, announce who you think the mystery thief is, and the four clues that led you to this conclusion. You may guess the mystery thief's identity before seeing all four clues, however, you lose three turns if your guess is wrong. When another player is guessing and incorrectly names a clue that you still hold, do not reveal your clue. Instead, wait until the guesser is finished, then announce that the guesser is wrong. Do not reveal the correct clue. If you correctly identify the mystery thief, pick up a warrant card on the back of the escape card and spin the landmark spinner to find out where the mystery thief is hiding. On your next turn, begin moving towards the hideout that you spun. After one player has a warrant card, all other players must get warrants at any police station. On the next turn, after the player's detective arrives at a police station, that player must answer a question correctly without multiple choice options to pick up a warrant card. After spinning the landmark spinner, that player's turn ends. The player may not move until their next turn. Players who answer incorrectly stay at the police station and try again on their next turn. To win the game, players pick up warrant cards. They must spend the landmark spinner to get the latest report on which landmark the thief is using as a hideout. Players may be trying to reach different hideouts. The first player to reach the hideout that they spun win the game. There are two special sets of rules that I do need to go over. 
If you are playing with less than four players, choose one card from each category without looking, then deal one card face down to each player, just as if four players were playing. When three players are playing, assign the remaining clue to a landmark by spinning the landmark spinner and placing the clue face down near the side of the board closest to the landmark. The first vile henchman to reach that landmark collects the clue. If two people are playing, assign two clues to the landmarks. If you are playing with more than four players, choose one card from each category, then assign them to the four different landmarks. Spin the landmark spinner and place one clue face down near the side of the board closest to that landmark. Repeat this procedure for the other three clues. The first vile henchman to reach a landmark with a clue collects that clue. To avoid confusion, you may want to make a note of which clue corresponds to which landmark. Well, this has been an overview of... Where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Uh, this game was manufactured in 1992 and is classified as a trivia game. Uh, it has some very uh, well put together parts. Um, the board is really nice to look at uh, and it has a lot of trivia questions, especially on world geography. Um, as a trivia game goes, uh, it's a pretty decent game. Um, the gameplay itself can take up to an hour, but you also have the option if you want to just uh, uh, use this game as a road trip game or something of that fact for family uh, uh, traveling events. The geography questions are pretty decent. Um, like I said, the game is very well built. It's very easy to pick up, very easy to learn, very easy to play. Uh, it goes online anywhere from about 10 to 20 bucks. So as games go, it's still relatively affordable. You can still find brand new copies of this game. Um, this game is pretty basic as uh, for a strategy game. It doesn't really have much strategy to it. It's more of a spin movement game. So um, it has a lot of luck factor to it versus... Um, basic uh, uh, strategy to it. Um, the only thing is world geography questions are pretty much the only thing that really hold this game up. Um, as a kid's game, it's a pretty decent game. But, like I said, it's being from 1992. Uh, a lot of the geography questions are out of date, especially with the countries of Czechoslovakia and uh, uh, a few others that no longer exist. So, um, but if you would like a retro game day or a, a learning lesson game, I could see this working out. Um, like I said, for a family game night, it's, I honestly wouldn't. I would find a much better game to play. But if you want to introduce your kids to learning something or want to get them used to playing games, this is a good gateway game for kids. But as for a group activity for adults, go find another game. Um, like I said, the game is decent, but it is out of date. And uh, if you haven't played Where in the World is Carmen San Diego, I'd recommend giving it a playthrough, see what you think. But uh, for a multiplayer game, if you're like a game night or something like that, honestly, I would go find a different game. Well, that's it from us here at the Gamer's Closet. We'd like to thank you for checking out our video on Where in the World is Carmen San Diego from University Games. If there's a game in the future you'd like us to review or go over, please put it in the comments below. Please hit subscribe so that way you can be the first to check out our future content. And as always, please have a great gaming day.